Hey everyone, it's Heather Mahalik and I have Lee Crugnelli here with me and we are going to discuss with you what's new in FOR 585. The first thing worth discussing is the new title of the course. Um, really the structure and the bones behind all the concepts that we came up with when we developed 585 are the same, but instead we changed the title from smartphone or advanced smartphone forensics to smartphone forensic analysis in depth. The main reason we did this is when anyone sees advanced in a title, they wonder where is the beginning course. So we wanted to just take that misconception and get rid of it. This course is really designed for anyone who could, currently does, or always works mobile device forensics. So we don't want anyone to feel intimidated by a title and thinking that they cannot just jump right into the course because that's really what we want is for everyone to be able to take this. We also rearranged some days, which we'll be discussing in the slides coming up, um, just to make the flow a little bit, bit better. And honestly, it's taken us five years to realize what we think the flow of this course should be. As with every major update, we have new labs. Two brand new malware labs, which we will discuss with you. Two new iOS labs based upon a lot of questions that we're getting from students things that we're seeing on Twitter, and just common trends that we think will help you work your everyday investigation. And then a brand new section with a brand new lab on evidence destruction, because let's be honest, we know at some point, everyone's trying to get rid of traces of a crime that they've committed. If you're a criminal, I guess. Not everybody is doing this. We added in more instructor demos as well, because sometimes seeing the instructor do something for you may give you a different spin on how you approach similar topics. And then as with everything, when we get rid of information from our course, we put it as bonus material. The main reason we do this is just because it's not relevant today or it's not the hottest topic today doesn't mean that type of device won't land on your desk. When we look at the agenda, so this is literally from day one of our course. Instead of starting with malware, we now go into a smartphone overview. And then our misfit devices. We have some choose your own adventure built into this morning. And then we dive right into SQLite because that is going to be the foundation that you'll need for the rest of the week. Uh, we'll teach basic query writing and you'll actually do that in a lab. And then we actually are diving into Android on day one instead of waiting for day two. Day two is Android all day with three labs. Day four, or sorry, day three is iOS all day with three labs. Day four, we have iOS backups in the morning and you get two different backups. We talk about cloud extractions, um, loading these different types of extractions, Apple production files, and all of those topics that everybody has to deal with. And then we go into malware and spyware forensics and evidence of data destruction. Um, both of these sections are new. So we've updated malware and spyware, which we will talk about, and evidence of data destruction is a brand new section thrown into the course. Day five always needs a facelift, which is unfortunate for Lee because she's the third party app queen of this course. And that is really the meat, I think, of the course because it puts everything together. And then we end it with an amazing forensic challenge that puts all the pieces together with multiple devices and try to keep it fun. When we look at the course in general, one of the biggest misconceptions is you use Celebrate. You're a Celebrate course, and that's actually the furthest thing from the truth. Do we use Celebrate? Yes. We also use Magnet tools. We use Oxygen Forensics. Um, we use Andriller, which is a tool that is now being reproduced and up and coming and costs a fraction of the price. We have a lot of custom scripts. Our goal is to not teach you how to use a tool. It is to teach you how far your tool can take you, how much of the tool can you trust, 
based upon artifacts, it always gets correct. And then when do you have to validate the data? What does validation look like? And what is occurring on the device that is making the tool interpret the data incorrectly? Because it's rarely the tool that just doesn't understand and gets it wrong. There's an underlying misconception that's occurring. The other thing we have to consider too is keeping the pace of the course. We are faced with updates every year, and you'll notice that our updates often go around the time that Android updates and iOS updates. That's why you usually get two a year from us. Um, anything that's new application-wise, Lee is always chasing this and trying to build it in. The tools, those things seem to update like every other week at least. So then that changes things for us, but there's always new techniques. There's customized scripts. Um, Alexis just sent out his new script on Twitter for Android data usage. Stuff like this is awesome. And the more we can include that in the class, the more valuable it is for the students. So with our labs and uh, lecture material, sometimes students may look at the lab and say, you know, you did not walk through this step by step during the lecture. And that is the way this course has been designed. There is so much data to be found on these smartphones that it's almost impossible to put it all in a lecture format up front for you. So the labs are designed to be another opportunity to teach you techniques and places to look for user artifacts. Um, like Heather had mentioned, all of the older labs that have been retired from the course are just moved into bonus material. So at the end of this course, you will walk away with 33 different labs with, from, with 32 unique devices that you can then look at uh, after the fact, look for other artifacts that we haven't questioned you about in the lab specifically. Um, so you will have this at your disposal anytime after the course to take a look at. For the major changes that we've really done in this iteration of the course, we decided to highlight two of them here. Um, honestly, Android just needed a major facelift. I made jokes about this on Twitter, but it did. I felt like, in all fairness, a lot of my emphasis the last two rounds has been chasing iOS. It is easier to handle iOS artifacts than it is Android. Um, one of the first hurdles I always hit is can I get an update on the devices I have? Do I need to buy a new Android device every time a version of Android comes out? And then in addition to that, how can I acquire this data? So that's really what this revamp section is going to focus on. Um, different acquisition methods, different analysis methods, all the hurdles that you also are going to be against. And then I finally had several devices where I went file by file so you don't have to to highlight all the files of interest. And then for the malware update, um, what we wanted to do with the malware section is kind of revamp it and take some of that information that you've learned up until that point. So everything you learned in days one through three, and then use that and apply it to detecting malware on, on your device. So go above and beyond the typical malware scans that are using um, signature analysis to detect malware. You're going to be able to detect it on your own uh, based on where data should reside in the file system and where things look like they're a little bit out of the ordinary. Uh, then in addition to that, it's going to focus on how that malware actually made it onto the device. Um, so we'll talk about some things that put your device at risk for malware. And then we'll go back and look to see if maybe malware um, got on the device via, you know, an email phishing scam, or maybe you were misdirected to another website and got malware that way. Um, we still focus on dissecting the malware applications themselves. Um, so while this isn't a new concept that was added to this section, um, we did update the tools that we're going to use. And we also used a different application to go through um, the specific steps in the lab. And when we were identifying the 
malware and taking a look at some of its malicious functionality, we wanted to be able to determine then whether or not any of those steps were carried out on the user's device. So we'll be able to go full circle, go back into our file system and see if that malicious application and any of the functionality that it included um, was able to carry out specific things on the device. So something like um, a fairly innocuous flashlight application. If it was determined to have access to your camera and your microphone, you know, was it sending pictures someplace? Do we have evidence now that those pictures and um, voice recordings were then sent off at certain times on the device? So we really like to take the malware section and make it full circle, um, soup to nuts, what you were going to do if you were using, um, if, you, if you wanted to perform a malware investigation on a device. You know, the bottom line is this course really is a lot of fun. Um, I think Heather and I both put a lot of effort into developing the material as well as the labs to make sure that they are um, not only a learning experience, but, you know, it's just kind of a, a fun thing to do. Um, when we're finished doing these updates, we talk back and forth about, you know, try my lab, look what I added into it. So there's always, you know, like a little a funny thing here or there for the students um, to get a chuckle out of at the end of the day. Because when we're standing up here in front of you, we want you to get as much enjoyment out of it as we have gotten you know, by developing the material. Uh, like Heather mentioned, the course is completely vendor neutral. That doesn't mean that we're not going to show you some of the big heavy hitters like Celebrate and Axiom and um, Oxygen. And truth be told, I may stand up in front of you and say, you know, this is my favorite tool for this specific um, function of analysis, and here's why. And Heather may have the same kind of opinion about another tool for a different technique that she's doing. At the end of it, you can go back with that information and take it to your own lab and say, this is why we want, you know, tool X, Y, or Z, because it works really well. Um, it's getting the data that I want out of it, and I know how it's interpreting the data that I want to be able to present. Um, in addition to, you know, the big heavy hitters, like Heather mentioned, there are going to be scripts developed all the time that are shared amongst our former students that we are going to make sure that you have at your disposal. At the end of this, what we really hope is that you walk away being able to work a mobile device um, in your lab, and we always want to make ourselves available so that it's as easy as possible for you. And armed with your posters and your cheat sheets and your course material, um, I, I believe you will walk away being able to work in mobile device after this course. And speaking of courses, um, our upcoming courses in April, when the new uh, update is released, the first course is in Orlando. And then we also have courses in London and Boston. We'll be at SecWest in May. And then we'll be in both Washington, D.C. and Australia in June. And as always, you can visit um, our for585.com blog for information there. And if you're interested in the course and getting a fuller description of the information that we've provided for you today, go out and visit us at for585.com forward slash course. Anything else to add, Lee? I think that's everything. All right, we hope to see you in class this year.